Anime, at its heart, is a distinct style of animation. Every scene of an animated feature must be meticulously planned, and every frame of action or filler content alike must be carefully drawn by hand. A very expensive and time-consuming process. Astro Boy, still known as Tetsuo and Adam in Japan, was one of the first examples of such an animated series. The show prominently featured a robotic protagonist named Astro Boy who fought evil robots and villains who threatened the safety of the world. As with all other examples of Japanese animation, the process of creating the show was lengthy and expensive. To make a return on their investment, the producers had to export Astro Boy to a foreign market. It was around this time that Fred Ladd was contacted from Tokyo with the prospect of adapting Tetsuan Adam to the American airwaves. Ladd already had experience with adapting media after previously working on translating European cartoons to English for a series Cartoon Classics, and thus was a prime candidate for bringing anime to America. And so he did. The name Tetsuan Adam was changed to the more English-friendly Astro Boy, and the plot was altered slightly to fit the American market. English voice actors read up the characters, bringing them to life for millions of American children and adults alike. Astro Boy was a huge success in America, running for over a decade. Merchandise based on the show and its protagonists gained a followership in the United States. In wake of Astro Boy's success, other Japanese animators saw their opportunity to begin airing their contents in the United States too. And so it began. Whereas the 1960s introduced Astro Boy to the American airwaves, the 1970s brought another wave of Japanese animation to the States, the most prominent of which was Speed Racer. Like Astro Boy, the show featured a main protagonist who fought for justice, a recurring concept in early anime. Though ported to the Americas, the show was heavily altered in order to censor suggestive content and violence, which was not unusual for ported Japanese series at the time. Speed Racer, like Astro Boy, was a great success. Other major series in the 1970s included Battle of the Planets, also known as Science Ninja Team Gachaman in Japan, and Star Blazers. Battle of the Planets was successful in the Americas, though was criticized for having readapting the storyline and animation in a crude fashion for American television. Star Blazers, on the other hand, left the majority of the plot and action unchanged leaving it as a much more serious show compared to many of the other anime features sent to the States. This separated it from the other redubbed and repackaged animes for quite a while. And still, the anime kept coming. The 1980s and 1990s, like the periods of time before them, brought their own distinct waves of anime. Shows like Voltron Defender of the Universe gained so much popularity at this time that they still have modern reboots to this day, such as the Netflix reboot Voltron Legendary Defender. At around the same time, film producer Hayao Miyazaki of Studio Ghibli began gathering a following for his movies, which included Naosaka of the Valley of the Wind and Castle in the Sky. Miyazaki saw his films as work of art above anything else. At around the same time, popular animes such as Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon rose to fame. It was during this surge that the popular Pokemon anime came out shortly after the original Pokemon games. Most importantly, however, this was a time when subbing became popular. Subbing was the act of adding subtitles in various languages to different animes. These new subbed animes were then distributed online and sold to non-Japanese-speaking anime fans. Though many of these unofficial subbing websites were shut down so shortly, their legacy carries out in modern-day official subs for popular animes. The 
Having been introduced to the concept of anime over the course of these 40 years, the 2000s were a perfect ground for American animators to begin experimenting with this widely successful Japanese style of animation. This is the period of time when shows such as Teen Titans and Avatar The Last Airbender were created. Though distinctly American in terms of episode plot progression and style, these shows still carry to them the original values of anime's roots and its traditional art. Even with the whole American TV series feel, the two shows managed to encompass the underlying concepts of anime as a whole. On a side note, Avatar The Last Airbender is also an amazing series, and you should watch it. No, seriously, do it. Though not technically based on Japanese animation, shows like Family Guy and The Simpsons came around as a result of this animation craze brought about by anime. Even in the American modern world, the legacy of the original anime culture lives on through modern animated cartoons. The influence has come a long way from its roots in Astro Boy in the 1960s, and with the popularity of modern anime and American cartoons, that influence isn't dying out anytime soon.